Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. You said Tupac. Yeah. yeah. Number That's one. I love her. I love okay, her. Okay, why? I met him. He was getting undressed. I knew you was met. Yeah, I knew it. I seen him in person before he died, and I told him I was coming. And he was like, I'm going to look out for you. But then he died. They let they took him away. Wow. So I started working harder. Every producer I work with, damn near work with Tupac. And they was like, damn, fuck, you right? Like, you just knock out shit like Tupac. So wow. I love him. I, you know, I hate to use that reference, but I really respect how he kind of raised me as far as I had sounds in my car around that age when Tupac was real popular. So every line that he was spitting, now that I'm an artist, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he trained me. Wow. And no other artist really or producer have trained me. I've worked with Dr. Dre as well too, though. Wow, you you, you work with how was that though? Yeah. No, let me let me get it. Yeah, I, I need to know how how. Was no, that? I come for Dr. Dre. Even I don't care what y'all said. Man got a billion dollars right at. He can I'm slap so, your wife right now. Oh hell no! Okay, I ain't yeah. gonna hear all that. You, <laughs> <laughs> no, that nigga gonna get it. Yeah, no, 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 that's a problem. It was cool. I actually. Um, uh, that song, I just want to fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a girl version, Dr. Dre. Wow. That you have never released that the fans uh, would love to hear. Wow. Me, Yo Yo, uh, True Purse. Um, we're all on that song. And yeah, he put it up. He shelved it. He shelved that bitch. That's Dang. why I wasn't ever his artist. I wasn't ever Ice Cube artist. I wasn't ever Mac 10 artist. Wow. I'm my own. Yeah, because you that. could control your narrative. Absolutely. Yeah. Ain't gonna like tell that. them what they probably do. Hey, the they got you baby mama. Mean? They got baby mamas with artists they fuck with. Like I just I'm just not into that crazy. But why ass they shit. have all the music and shelf it for? What are they gonna do with it? Why not release it? I don't it? know. I don't know. Shit. Maybe his ex wife might You know, own that's it later. a that's a Who trip knows? because what you said, you know, they they do have those encounters with the people that they interact with. And when you are stern and you step up and say, Hey, I'm gonna do this business and that's it. They don't want to see you get that bag after that. After <laughs> that rejection, right. you take your ass, your goddamn ass, and that's go somewhere. I'm shit. telling you, I know and what's you gotta going find on. Your own way, so shit. But when you I, talented, but, you later. but when yeah. you talented, you can just keep going and yeah. keep yeah, writing your I, own I was stuff. thankful that I turned down. To, no, no. So yeah. how was it working? Right. In, 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 because we can talk about that. How was it working in the studio with Dre? Oh, shit, there was a lot of people in there, you know. Um, it's always a lot of people. I like working in chaos a little bit sometimes. Yeah. It kind of makes me, you know, like, it drives me to be greater. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who the fuck is in here? Ain't no telling. And I know they don't work like me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So we get in the booth and, you know, Dre like, yeah, do the line. Like, you know, he, you know, I want to do his producing stuff. And I'm like, okay. Shit. So but he, he, never he put does it out. give pointers. So. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, you will take that shit because at the end of the day, you want your shit to be in pocket. Right. You yeah. want them to love it. You want them to mix it. But if you never put it out, I don't give a shit about that session. Right. I got paid. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's dope that you got to do that. A lot of people would love to be in Oh, and shoes. to be on the Up and Smoke tour with, you know, everybody was the most, like, rewarding thing of my career. I learned how to be on tour like no other. Like, wow. I literally was on a music boot camp. I didn't have nobody with me. What did Ice Cube say to you that was impactful that you feel like you, you, you took from it? I know you said Tupac said something mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. But what did Ice Cube say to you? Anything or what did he do? He could have done said, something. Well, he um, actually showed me some things. You know, um, he had an instant replay machine back then. Uh, it, you could program all your music in it and stuff. So when I got signed to Universal, I was on the Up and Smoke tour. Mm -hmm. So my first investment was an instant replay machine. Wow. So I bought the instant replay machine so my DJ can go find my music. I don't like chaos at the booth. Mm -hmm. You got to do the shit right. And so I took pointers from him. And then when, when the tour was over, he said, talk to everybody now. You know what I'm saying? You never know who you're going to, you never know if you're going to see anybody again. Yeah. And I think that that was real important because I do work with people. I reach out, you know what I'm saying? And um, I also allow new artists to work with me as well. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.